God, what happened here? Hello everyone, this is Warrior Dan, and today we are going to be talking about Battle Carnival, the new class-based FPS to hit Steam. Class-based shooters seem to be one of the more popular and successful trends in recent years, although the success of said games can vary from being overwhelmingly popular to being a complete and disastrous backfire. Overwatch, Paladins, Evolve, Battleborn, Lawbreakers, and Killing Floor 2 are all recent examples of this trend. Battle Carnival markets itself in a similar way, having a visual style and similar sense of humor to games like Lawbreakers, as well as class-based combat closely resembling the aforementioned games like Overwatch. But after several hours spent in-game familiarizing myself with the classes, their varying combat mechanics, their health and stamina meters, etc., in order to identify similarities consistent in other games, I ultimately came to the conclusion that the only credible comparison that could be made is between Battle Carnival and CS. Go. The combination of a primary weapon with a knife melee along with the level design does feel oddly similar in nature to what could be expected of a Counter-Strike game, specifically Counter-Strike Global Offensive, commonly referred to in the industry as CSGO. The maps can vary in layout and in presentation. They all maintain a air of simplicity, in that you can find the objective without much navigation needed. The layout is well designed to ensure that players cannot just simply camp in a corner and get easy kills. Almost all cover in the game is not absolute, encouraging players to remain mobile, as opposed to remaining stationary. The art style in the game invokes a cocktail mix of CSGO and Rainbow Six Siege. Clearly this game took notes on its more notable competition within the genre. That said, the presentation and execution of class-based abilities in the game add a unique spin onto the tried-and-true CSGO formula, and can make all the difference in any given team fight over the course of a game. The game does suffer from some issues, such as having very weak spawn protections. In one particular game, me and my team easily overwhelmed the enemy team after their initial push onto the control point. Then we took advantage of the enemy's respawn time to make our way into their spawn room, where we spent several minutes massacring them over and over again before finally being killed. However, we bought enough time for the objective to be accomplished, winning us the round. If this game was merely a free-for-all, multiplayer FPS arena game, it would be logical to assume that there would be no real spawn protection or dedicated spawn rooms. However, with a game that's centered around team dynamics and cooperation in order to win objectives, and subsequently the game as a whole, it's very odd to see a developer decide not to, or forget to, add dedicated team spawn rooms, with spawn protection blocking out enemy players from entering. The game does not really offer any penalties for engaging in this kind of behavior. As far as I could tell anyway, Battle Carnival does not seem to have any sort of readily available player report system, making it all but impossible to report toxic players or cheaters. The hit detection in Battle Carnival is really inconsistent, on the edge of effectively making ranged combat broken entirely. I've had many shots that clearly sort of hit the enemy target, but for whatever reason they would miss entirely. Now I'm by no means a pro gamer, I've missed more than a couple of shots at the best of times, but I can tell the difference between a shot that I missed and a shot that the game robbed me of. When players first load up the game, they are greeted with a interactive looping animation of one of the characters in their idealistic setting, all of them equally outlandish and over the top in their own right. These idol animations are also accompanied with their own unique musical riff and unique character voice lines, greeting the player and sewing off their personality. It's actually a kind of nice touch. I could see how some people view it as a bit obnoxious, but from my perspective it does seem like a pleasant way of doubling down on the unique humorous nature of the characters, and in doing so separates Battle Carnival from its more serious-minded competition. It's more daring and risky to develop a game with self-aware humor and fourth-wall breaking jokes, because you really have to ensure that the game's humor comes across to the players as intended. For the most part, Battle Carnival pulls off humor well, however there are a few times where the game tries a little bit too hard with some of its one-liners and riffs on more popular games. Battle Carnival quite literally steals voice lines from Overwatch, such as the now legendary Justice Reigns from Above, originally uttered by Ferret when using her ultimate ability in Overwatch, a quote which has now been more or less cemented in history as a Overwatch meme. In Battle Carnival, it's quoted often by the game's grenade launcher toting character, when pulling out a rocket launcher for his ultimate ability. 
Now despite me being an Overwatch player, I'm not really offended by this, but I think this is a example of the developers not fully utilizing and taking advantage of their own unique heroes and atmosphere, and instead of relying too hard on these unnecessary third party references as essentially a creative crutch, driving the game forward, and instead it just comes across as really unnecessary and forced. Battle Carnival currently has four main game modes, Control Point, Demolition, Bootcamp, and Payload, the latter of which is currently in a public testing phase as of the time of this video. While I was unable to capture footage of Demolition due to limited player interest in the mode, resulting in unbearably long queue times to get into a game, I did put a fairly extensive amount of time in other game modes, specifically Capture Point. The Capture Point mode is easily the best, with consistent pacing and some of the best design maps in the game. If you've ever played games like Overwatch or Team Fortress 2, the gameplay here is fairly similar, requiring players to stand on a objective point within the clearly defined boundaries, and keep enemy players from stealing the control point from you. Bootcamp is your basic tutorial game mode, where new and inexperienced players face off against other players of the same skill level in a small team deathmatch map, with the ultimate goal being the first team to get 100 kills wins. This game mode is only available to players with a reputation level of less than level 25. After this point, presumably, the mode will no longer be available to you. Payload is very similar to its Overwatch or TF2 counterparts, with the goal being to push a cart from one end of the map to the other, passing through specific checkpoints to gain additional time on the clock. While I am fully aware this payload game mode is still in very early public development, the gameplay flow is a complete mess with the level feeling very confining and restrictive, both for the attacking team and the defensive team alike. Limited flanking routes reduces the overall replay value of the map immensely. A good payload map has a number of chokeholds, as well as alternate routes to get to higher ground or through interior buildings to gain cover, or to use to flank around the enemy in the hopes of taking them by surprise. As far as the character classes go, Battle Carnival is comprised of eight unique different heroes, each with their own unique art style, voice lines, and weapon loadouts, Phoenix, a shotgun wielding SWAT officer, is armed with a ballistic seal to absorb incoming fire, a suppression grenade, and a health kit in case you get in over your head. Simple enough. Rumblejack, a mid-range sniper carrying an automatic sniper rifle, good for picking off enemies while being in the middle of the action, kind of your typical mid-tier support. Big Boy, this game's knockoff demo man from TF2, equipped with a vividly decorated grenade launcher, a secondary nail gun, a rocket launcher, and a soda can that allows him to regenerate a small amount of health at a time. I played a bit of him while I was gathering footage for the game. He was kind of fun. He was probably my second favorite character in the game, but I felt there's still some mechanics that just felt a little bit off with the character. And then we have Killjoy, a dual-wielding pistol maniac with the unusual ability to go invisible at will and use his long knife to kill enemies with a well-timed melee attack. Natasa, another hero I spent a fair amount of time on, a long-range assassin armed with a primary sniper rifle, good for long-range shots, as well as a silenced pistol for close-range combat and a UAV scanner allowing her to temporarily see enemies through walls. Natasa's pretty good as a backline defense, however, she's not a hero you want on the front lines. You're gonna get easily picked and you'll die. Then we have Cindy, my absolute favorite character of the bunch, a mid-range support class, utilizing an automatic assault rifle that, when targeting allies, can quickly heal them with each consecutive shot. Using her alternate fires, she can also heal groups of teammates, including herself, by using the right mouse button to activate a cooldown ability. She can also spawn an energy shield, briefly protecting her from incoming enemy fire. And finally, Rhino, a minigun toting, rocket launcher blasting tank hero who, with the right support at his side, can shred through enemies like paper. All the heroes fit together within specific roles and if used in combination properly, can really work together well to ensure overall success. The biggest problem with the game at the moment is that by no means is it bad, but it relies too strongly on its gameplay inspirations, and thus to the average Steam user can appear to be a poor copy of said games, even though in truth that's not really the case at all. Also, it seems the Battle Carnival developers, just like our good friends over on the Finding Bigfoot dev team, have a somewhat noticeable problem with handling criticism directed at their title, regardless of the possible legitimacy or the credibility of its source. After initially noticing the problems with the game's lag compensation, I decided to try reaching out to the developers over on the game's official Discord channel via posting in the feedback and suggestions chat room. It didn't exactly go as planned, with the lead moderator at the time having a somewhat severe temper tantrum over the fact that I dared to question the idea that the hitboxes might not be entirely accurate, and the idea of allowing bots to jump in to replace unbalanced teams, while well, that didn't exactly go as planned. And subsequently, they tried to kick me from the server quite repeatedly, but apparently this moderator didn't have access to the ban feature 
teacher because I kept coming back anyway to finish the argument, then I decided to leave on my own. It just strikes me as odd that, for most early access games, most developers understand that the entire prospect of early access means that the game is constantly in development and there is every opportunity for correcting mistakes as they go. Early access is all about working with the community to ensure that the game one day reaches its full potential, and to do so means that you have to work with the community to address bugs, to discuss gameplay changes, to discuss everything relating to the overall improvement of the game. However, when your lead moderator simply declares that, well, the game's early access so there's nothing you can do about it, and then when someone decides to point out the existing flaws in the game, simply dismiss that person as being hateful of an early access game, that's simply not productive and it's not healthy for a community. If the developers take the time to address the game's hitbox issues and refine the gameplay to make it feel a little less clunky and continue to release updates on a consistent basis, I do hope that they will eventually find their footing and gain a stable audience of dedicated players. My final score for Battle Carnival is a 6 out of 10. Shameful display! It's a game that, despite its many, many flaws, manages to maintain its own unique identity while simultaneously borrowing extensively from other larger games. If the issues I've outlined are fixed in future updates, and the developers continue supporting the title, and they decide to continue working with the community instead of being at odds with the community, such as learning to be more transparent and cooperative instead of covering mistakes with excuses, I could easily see Battle Carnival rising to a potential 7 or even 8 out of 10. My personal philosophy is not to root for a game shutdown or a developer's demise. I think that mindset is selfish petty and indicates a overall absence of healthy emotional intelligence. I also hope that the developers become more efficient at marketing their game and take more proactive measures to keep players in the loop instead of punishing people for pointing out critical problems and attempting to cover up mistakes instead of fixing them. But that's where I'm going to end this video for today. What do you think of Battle Carnival? Do you agree with my assessment? Do you think I may have overlooked some critical or minute detail? Tell me your opinions down in the comment section below. I'm not looking for everyone to agree with me. I do have my own opinions and they are just that. They are my own opinions. Granted, they are what I consider well-informed opinions, but they're still my opinions. And you may have entirely different opinions to me and that's absolutely fine. I'll be curious to hear your opinions down in the comments below. And if you do comment, I will try to take the time to reply. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to get notified when I upload a new video. With YouTube's ever-changing algorithms, this seems like the only way that seems to be working right now. This is Warrior Dan signing out. Stay awesome everybody and peace out.